The cloud computing market is growing at 22% this year, reaching $980 billion. It's one of the fastest growing industries in tech, projected to exceed $5 trillion in the next decade. Now, this explosion is creating unprecedented opportunities for anyone looking to break into the industry. And if you're considering a career in the cloud, then you've probably found yourself stuck between these two different paths, cloud engineer or cloud architect. The question is, which one should you choose? and is the conventional wisdom about these career paths actually setting you up for failure. I'm Suleiman, I've worked in tech for a decade and I run my own cloud security consultancy. Now through my academy, I've helped more than 500 students learn cloud and AI with my first principles blueprint for engineers. I've personally worked in both of these roles. So in this video, I'll reveal what they involve, the skills that you need and the salaries that you could expect. Because by the end of this video, you'll know exactly which path aligns best with your own personal goals. Now, before we dive deep, I need to clarify something. There's often confusion about what these titles actually mean. Cloud engineers are hands-on implementers. They are actually building and deploying cloud infrastructure. Cloud architects focus more on the design side of things. They're architecting the systems that cloud engineers will then go and deploy. Now you may have heard of a solutions architect as well. They focus more on the high level business strategy. In terms of career progression, it typically looks like this. You go from cloud engineer to senior cloud engineer to cloud architect, and then finally you go to solutions architect. Now that we understand the landscape, let's dive into what these two roles actually involve. Cloud engineers are very much hands-on implementers who build and maintain cloud infrastructure. When Netflix needs to handle millions of users streaming simultaneously, cloud engineers will build the auto-scaling infrastructure that makes that possible. When a startup needs to deploy their applications globally, cloud engineers will configure the networking, the security, the compute resources to make all of this happen. Now, as a cloud engineer, a typical day can involve things like this. Debugging network issues between services, so when different parts of an application can't talk to each other properly, you figure figure out what's blocking the communication and then you fix it. Maybe you spend some time optimizing cloud costs by right-sizing instances, making sure the company that you're working for isn't paying for more computing power than they actually need. Or you'll be automating deployment processes that were previously done manually, which is setting up CI CD pipelines so that when developers finish coding some features, their work can automatically get pushed to production instead of someone having to do this by hand each time. So you're basically saving time. Now, as you can tell, it requires a deep technical skill set, particularly in one cloud platform. Now, I recommend AWS because it's the industry leader. So you'll need to master the core services. EC2, S3, VPC, IM, along with infrastructure's code tools like Terraform or CloudFormation. You also need strong scripting abilities in Python and Bash, which are essential. Plus, you need experience with CI CD tools like Jenkins or GitHub Actions. Now, career wise, cloud engineers typically start earning around $100,000 a year. And as you start to gain experience, you can comfortably earn over $200,000. But what happens when you want to move beyond just implementing solutions to actually designing them? And that's where cloud architecture architects come into the picture. They operate at a completely different level to cloud engineers. While cloud engineers focus on implementation, architects focus on high level system design and strategic technology decisions. For example, when a company like Airbnb needs to scale to handle millions of global users, cloud architects design how services will communicate, how data will flow between different systems, and how the platform will stay online even when individual components fail. When I was working as a cloud architect, my role completely changed overnight. Night. Although I could build the actual infrastructure hands-on, that was no longer expected of me. In terms of a typical day in the life of a cloud architect, it involves meeting stakeholders to understand business requirements, sitting down and figuring out what problems that they need technology to solve and what constraints that they're working with because everyone is working under a set of constraints. You'll be creating system design documents, basically drawing blueprints that show how all the technical pieces will work together. You might be reviewing technical proposals from engineering teams and making decisions about technology standards standards. So choosing which tools and which approaches that the entire organization will use, ensuring that everything is working together smoothly towards a longer term strategy. Essentially, cloud architects focus on the big picture, which requires a skill set that goes beyond pure technical knowledge. Yes, you need deep understanding of cloud services and system design patterns, but you also need business acumen and the ability to make technical decisions that align with business objectives. Salary wise, cloud architects typically start around 140 to 180 thousand dollars and experienced architects can earn anything between 200 to three hundred thousand dollars at large companies now 
Here is something critical that many people don't understand about this career progression. You cannot become a cloud architect without first being a cloud engineer with hands-on implementation experience. Now, I know there might be some people on YouTube that tell you they were a cloud architect or they are looking to become an architect first. But when you see things like this and you hear things like this, you have to think logically so it makes sense. How can you design solutions if you've never implemented anything yourself? How can you understand the practical constraints and challenges if you've only worked with theoretical concepts. When I was working as a cloud architect, my background as a cloud engineer was invaluable. I could spot potential problems in architectural designs because I had debugged similar issues in production. I understand which solutions look good on paper, but which one would be nightmares to maintain in production environments and how it would work operationally. Most importantly, when I presented architectural designs to engineering teams, I had the credibility because they knew I'd actually build and maintained similar systems. You can't get hired as a cloud architect without significant hands-on experience. So if you're just starting out, the path seems very clear. You want to begin as a cloud engineer and you want to build deep technical expertise before moving to more senior roles like a cloud architect. So don't fall for it. There's no such thing as a junior cloud architect. It doesn't exist in the real world, okay? It just doesn't right? <laughs> no one is hiring real junior architects and assigning them to clients so they can make big strategic decisions. And trust me, I know I've worked with many organizations from Fortune 500 to startups to government agencies. But anyway, this traditional linear progression is being disrupted by something most people haven't even noticed yet. Because there's something happening in 2025 that's fundamentally changing these traditional career paths. Now, the boundaries between a cloud engineer and a cloud architect are slowly dissolving. And a big driving factor of this is AI. Companies are realizing that engineers can be way more efficient today and get more done with way less time. So naturally, they expect you to have a more well-rounded skill set. So this is creating opportunities for a specific type of engineer. Let me explain. When I look at the most successful people in tech today, Elon Musk, Jensen Huang, Sundar Pichai, Satya Nadella, these big time CEOs, they all have one thing in common. They are all what I call technical leaders. They understand technology deeply enough to make strategic decisions, but they also understand business and implementation realities. Take Elon Musk as the perfect example. Now, whether you like him or not, before becoming the CEO of Tesla and SpaceX, he was hands-on engineering. At SpaceX, he taught himself rocket engineering and was personally involved in designing the Falcon 1 rocket. At Tesla, he understood both the software and the hardware engineering and the challenges of electric vehicles. This true engineering background is exactly why he can make strategic decisions that other CEOs simply cannot do. When SpaceX needed to reduce costs, he understood the technical constraints well enough to give specific engineering solutions like reusable rockets. These guys are no longer just visionaries. Long gone are the days where CEOs of big tech companies can just be business people. You need technical understanding and real implementation skills, which all of these leaders have in common. And I see a similar pattern emerging in cloud. The engineers who are absolutely crushing it in today's market aren't just pure cloud engineers or pure cloud architects. They are technical leaders who can operate effectively at both of these levels. These are people who can just sit in a boardroom and explain to executives why a particular architectural approach will save the company $2 million annually. And then they can just go back to their desk and actually build the solution that they've just proposed. They understand business requirements deeply enough to design the appropriate solutions, but they also have the technical skills to validate that their designs actually work in practice. And because of this combined skill set, these engineers will just make more money as well. And that's exactly why inside of my academy, I teach my students system design and cloud architecture principles from day one. Not because I expect them to become cloud architects immediately, but it's more about the fact that when you understand system design principles, you just make better architectural decisions and then ending up building way better cloud solutions. This approach gives you the launch pad to become a technical leader from the very beginning of your career and they don't teach you this on Udemy or anywhere on YouTube, in fact. So how do you become one of these technical leaders? It starts with a fundamental mindset shift about how you approach these problems. Most engineers think in terms of how do I implement this? Most architects think in terms of what should the design actually look like? But technical leaders think differently. And here is how you can implement that shift today. For every technical project that you complete, ask yourself questions like this. What business problem does this solve? How does this create value for the organization? What would happen if this system failed? How does this fit into the broader technical strategy for the company? First, it makes you dramatically more valuable because you 
you can connect technical work to business outcomes. Secondly, it accelerates your career progression because you're already thinking like a senior professional from day one, even while building foundational technical skills. Now, you're probably asking, what does all of this mean for your career choice? My recommendation is not to choose between cloud engineer and cloud architect. Don't box yourself into one title because at every company, titles mean slightly different things. Instead, become a technical leader who can operate at both levels and acquire a well-rounded skill set. And this matters because let's say you land a job at a big tech company like AWS, they're going to expect you to think strategically and understand the business side of things, even as a cloud engineer. But maybe you want to work at a startup instead, which is fine. But guess what? You're probably going to be the only cloud person in a team of five. They need you to design the system and build it. The jack of all trades. And who knows, maybe one day you want to start your own company. And I've done that many times. But you can do that when you can spot a real problem in the market and actually have the skills to build the solution yourself. That's where the real magic happens because most people don't think like this. They are stuck in the I'm either this or I'm either that mentality. But the people making the real money with the most opportunities, well, they simply blur those lines. So. If you want to learn more about being a cloud engineer, then check this video right here for my free full cloud engineer course where I break down everything that you need to know. And if you want my one-on-one -on -one help to learn cloud engineering, then click the link in the bio to accelerate your progress.